I like science, which is good. It's basically magic. Kind of make you be like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about in life. It's credible information. Facts aren't the only thing that drives you. There's all these other things around you that you value a lot as a person that facts can't explain. I love the way that it takes these complex, serious ideas and it simplifies them down into these bite-sized chunks that I can share. Wow. Only I knew what you knew. It's one thing for me to try and explain what's going on and why it's exciting. It helps you appreciate like life and helps you appreciate your hobbies, understanding why things taste so delicious, why things cook the way they do, why there are so many animals. Ultimately, what I'm searching for about science is to explain the beauty of nature. The really cool stuff that's happening, I can send the links to my friends and my family and say, hey, check this out, and know that they're going to understand it and they're going to enjoy it. I love all those like stories of the people and the science, how they've come together. It makes me feel powerful and gossipy. Okay, so hello, I'm Lisa, I work at Australia Science Channel, so we're an online platform for science news, content, videos, articles, and we're operated by the Royal Institution of Australia, so we're a charity, we're a not-for-profit. So we do this to try and engage all of Australians in stories about science, technology, engineering and maths. So why do we do that? We think it's really important. So I think obviously the people here today, people who love making and creating um, and creative thinkers, a lot of that touches on the same kinds of ways that scientists and engineers go about their work. And so we really, we really want to tell those um, Australian science stories that are less well known. So I thought I'd give an example of one that I just found out this week and you may have heard it before, but I had not. Uh, we, had, we ran an event this week that we uh, broadcast out of um, the Science Exchange here in Adelaide, and a uh, researcher from UniSA was telling us about, he works in thin film plastics, so they stick thin films um, onto plastics to create new products. And he was telling us that actually Neil Armstrong, uh, bleh, uh, bleh, 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 sorry, <laughs> um, uh, astronaut who went to the moon in 1969, he had uh, sunglasses with a coating that was actually made here in Adelaide by a company here in Adelaide, and he took those sunglasses on the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. And that's a whole side of space history that I was not aware of, and I've learned a lot about Australia and space history in the last month, um, and that was a completely new story to me. And so all of these kinds of stories about our history uh, and about the things that are happening now and the opportunities that they're creating for the future are the things that we want to share with people. Uh, so we're also really... In really interested in inspiring young people to continue to uh, study science and maths at school. And so one of the ways that we do that is through our Ultimate Careers magazine. So if anyone here is an educator, I can talk to you about that later. All the Year 9 and 10 students in South Australia get a copy of it that uh, helps explain to them all the different kind of career pathways in science and maths and engineering that exists in Australia, and not just focusing on the usual go to university after school, but all the different kinds of pathways that people can get to science and maths related jobs. Uh, and we do also love making science entertaining. So uh, people are much more likely to read your things and watch your videos if you make them entertaining. This is a, a, an image from a tour that we did a couple of years ago. Um, I'm assuming that there's some Doctor Who fans in the room, possibly. There's certainly some, tar some um, Daleks out outside that I've seen wandering around. Uh, and we did a Science of Doctor Who tour in collaboration with the BBC um, all around Australia, talking about the science uh, in Doctor Who and kind of picking apart what, what's realistic and what's not. And you may recognise this face, so this is Brian Cox, and we've had him um, a couple of times take part in things on our channel, so we've uh, done events where we've been able to do um, question and answers from students all around Australia, and we've live streamed that out to about 16,000 students all around Australia. Uh, but we don't just focus on kind of the science superstars, even though that is the, one of my favourite parts of my job, is that I get to meet amazing people um, like Brian Cox. We do like to show um, the actual process of science and the humans doing it and the very human problems that they have to deal with, which I'll give an example of in a moment. 
Um, I put this slide up because when Suman invited me to speak today, um, and thank you very much, Suman, and all of the organisers here for what you've done today. It's an incredible, incredible event that they put on, and it's all run by volunteers, and it's amazing. So if you see the people in the red T-shirts, go up and say thank you to them because it's a lot of hard work, and they've done a great job. Um, so Suman asked me when we caught up at the Space Congress, so about a month ago, Adelaide hosted the, one of the world's biggest space conferences. There was about 4,000 people from all over the world involved in the space industry came to Australia to talk about what they do. And one of those people was Elon Musk, and he gave a talk about humans becoming a multi-planetary species, which was quite mind-blowing. Um, and after that, we did a panel uh, here, which, again, we broadcast out through Australia's Science Channel with Alan Duffy, who you may recognise. He pops up all the time whenever anyone wants to talk about astronomy on television. Um, he's our lead scientist. And then three scientists, including uh, Beth, who works at NASA JPL, but is originally from Australia, and Joel Gilmore at the far end, who uh, works for Gilmore Technologies, which is a space startup based uh, between Singapore and Brisbane, and they build and launch rockets. Uh, and in the middle there was a uh, former astronaut, uh, Michael Lorenzo Alpez. And they kind of broke down the, you know, realities of Elon's um, vision that we were going to be on Mars by 2022. Uh, does anybody recognise this person? No? Can anyone tell me the names of a as female Australian scientist? Any woman who is a scientist, do you know one? No? Your, <laughs> your Arnie Kelly. Yeah, your, <laughs> that's my son. <laughs> your, your Arnie Kelly is a, is a scientist, isn't she? So this lady is Lisa Harvey Smith, and she is a, an astronomer. Um, this was actually taken, we uh, recorded an interview with her when she was over for National Science Week in August of last year. Um, and we curate a whole channel um, on Australia's Science Channel dedicated to women in STEM or science, technology, engineering and maths um, because there are so many women doing amazing things in science in this country and um, a lot of the time uh, those stories are not told or not told often enough and so we really want to shine a light on them and give them a platform. So we, that's something that we really focus on doing. Um, if you don't know any names of any women scientists, I recommend going outside and playing the, um, what's it called? Who's, yeah, guess, guess who. who, yeah. There's a guess who that's been made, especially for Maker Fair, with um, a lot of women scientists on it outside. So start there. And Lisa Harvey-Smith. Um, as I said, yeah, we, we're interested in telling, you know, the heroic stories of science, but also, and I put this one, this, a short clip of, this is a documentary that we produced earlier this year about um, a, a guy who's building a better human-powered vehicle, so the pedal pre cars. Um, this was in collaboration with UniSA. And I thought this might resonate with some of the people here. If you are a maker, you might identify with what happens next. You know, it was all about to go wrong. This is the moment we were expecting to see the car pull away and turn its first laps. But unfortunately, components Simon had installed in the early hours of that morning failed as he set off. The test had finished almost before it began. So Simon, we just saw you get into the car and then we saw you get out of the car pretty quickly. What was going on for you in those moments? Um, basically, we, we tried to push things very, very hard to make everything come together for today and it hasn't worked out. So uh, a very long story short, we've spent uh, nearly 24 hours straight in a workshop uh, working on this to, to get it out for our debut test day and it, it hasn't happened. So. I think that's probably something familiar to anyone who has gone through the creative process of trying to bring something to life from idea to reality. Um, and that was, you know, and this was a project that we'd actually followed over several months and months and months and months. And, um, you know, we didn't, there was no happy ending where the, you know, new car rode happily off into the sunset. This was the real ending of 
have where the project, it's not obviously where the project ended, he could keep, wor keep working on it. But we wanted to kind of highlight and show that process of science that I think really resonates with um, the ethos of, you know, the Maker Fair and the community here that, um, uh, and that's one of the things that we really want to highlight about science is it's the, you know, creative thinking and tinkering and trying and failing and trying again. So this is what Australia Science Channel looks like if you go and visit it today. That was what it looked like yesterday. Um, so we have news on there. We, um, we write about science news. We share um, videos from uh, all of our trusted publishing partners. So uh, there was a panel earlier today talking about uh, social media and the maker uh, culture. And they were talking about um, how sometimes it's difficult to know, to assess the skill level or the credibility of the people that are, you know, putting themselves across as experts in a particular field. Um, and that's something that we're really hyper aware of in science, um, and it's something that uh, we combat by only inviting trusted publishers to um, publish with us. So all of the content is uh, credible and reliable. So we, so um, organizations like the Australian Academy of Science and the universities are able to um, share their science content with us. So again, if anyone here is associated with one of the universities locally, Flinders, um, uh, Adelaide or UniSA, they're all partners with us, so if you work on interesting things in those places, um, come and talk to me and we'll get those stories out. So, yeah, just uh, reiterating some of our partners that we work with. And I know that uh, quite often at these events there are a lot of educators and teachers come along, so I just thought I would also mention that we have a free resource for teachers that we make in collaboration with the education department. So we take all of the news and videos that we make on Australia's Science Channel and we map them to the curriculum for teachers so that they can use them in the classroom. So that's, that's a free thing that you can sign up for, so that's kind of how it looks for teachers. So they get the video that they can use, but then it tells them all of the you know, where it matches up in the curriculum and how they can use it in the classroom. So if you are an educator or you know one, we make this for free for them to be able to use. And again, we're trying to focus on parts of the curriculum that other organisations don't focus as much on. So that's um, the process of science and how science works. And the last project that I wanted to just mention is uh, Cinema International Science Film Festival, uh, which is the largest science film festival in the Southern Hemisphere, which we run. Uh, has been around since about 2000, was formerly run by CSIRO, and we took it over in uh, 2016. And this year we had over 1,300 entries from 90 countries around the world, and uh, during National Science Week we had over 30,000 people see cinema in over 300 screenings all around the country, one on Christmas Island. Last year we had one on an Antarctic base station, which was pretty cool. Um, so I wanted to talk about cinema because if you are a maker, um, or you are a content maker in particular, if you have, if you are making um, videos, stories about science, and, and this can be, they don't have to be documentary, they don't have to be factual, we do take, um, you know, uh, fiction, works of fiction, sci-fi, those types of things as well, um, I'd really encourage you to submit them to Cinema next year. Our next round opens in uh, December for submissions for 2018. So yeah, so that's cinema. So we like telling those science stories, but in a bit of a different way. And cinema is amazing. The creativity that the filmmakers bring to those stories is really um, amazing to watch. So yeah, if you, if you are a filmmaker or you know one, encourage them to submit something. And thank you very much, Suman, for inviting me. Thanks so much, Lisa. Is there any questions from the room? No? That's all right. It's a big day today. Thanks, everyone. This has been an amazing uh, day of speakers. I really appreciate you guys popping by, and I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of your Make a Fair day. Bye. <laughs>